But today, nothing was going to go wrong. It was even worse being with Dolly and Pierce to be spending the day somewhere that wouldn't school. His cupboard or Mrs. Fig's cabbage-smelling living room. While he drove, Uncle Vernon complained at Aunt Petunia. He liked to complain about things. People at work, Harry, the console, Harry, the bank, and Harry were just a few of his favorite subjects. This morning, it was motorbikes. Rowing alone like mani- maniacs, the young Colons. He said, as a motorbike overtook them. I had a dream about a motorbike," said Harry, remembering suddenly. It was flying. Uncle Vernon nearly crashed into the car in front. He turned right around in his seat and yelled at Harry, his face like a gigantic big road with a mustache. Motorbikes don't fly. Dolly and Pierce sniggered. "I know they don't," said Harry. "It was only a dream." But he wished he hadn't said anything. If there was one thing that Dudley's hated even more than his asking questions, it was his talking about anything acting a way it shouldn't, no matter if it was in a dream or even a cartoon. They seemed to think he might get dangerous ideas. It was a very sunny Saturday, and Saturday, and the zoo was crowded with families. The Dursleys bought Dudley and Pierce large chocolate ice creams at the entrance, and then the closest mining lady in the van had asked Harry what he wanted before they could hurry him away. They bought him a cheap lemon ice lolly. It wasn't bad. Either Harry thought, looking at as they watched a gorilla scratching his head and took remarkably like Dudley, except that it wasn't blonde. Harry had the best morning he had in a long time. He was careful to walk a little way apart from the Dursleys to so that Dudley had. And Pierce, who was starting to get bored with the animals by lunchtime, wouldn't fall back on their favorite hobby of hitting him. They ate in the zoo rest rest restaurant, and when Dolly had a tantrum because his nigger burger glory wasn't big enough, Uncle Vernon bought him another one, and Harry was allowed to finish the first. Harry felt. Afterwards, that he should have known it was all too good at last. After lunch, they went to the reptile house. It was cool and dark in here, with lit windows all along the walls. Behind the glass, all sorts of lizards and snakes were crawling and slithering over bits of wood and stone. Dolly and Pierce wanted to see huge poisonous. Cobras and thick man crushing fighters. Fighters. Dudley quickly found the largest snake in the place. It could have wrapped its body twice around Uncle Vernon's car and crushed it in your dustbin. But at the moment, it didn't look in the mood. In fact, it was fast asleep. Dudley stood with his nose pressed. Against the glass, staring at the green snake brown coils, make a move! He winked at his father. Uncle Vernon tapped on the glass, but the snake didn't budge. Do it again! Dolly ordered. Uncle Vernon rapped the glass smartly with his knuckles, but the snake just moved on. This is boring! Dolly moaned. He shuffled away. Harry moved in front of the tank and looked intently at the snake. He wouldn't have been surprised if it had died of boredom itself. No complaint except stupid people drumming their fingers on the glass, trying to disturb it all day long. It was worse than having a cupboard at a, a cupboard as a bedroom, where the only visitor was Aunt Petunia, hammering on the door to wake you up. At least he got to visit the rest of the house. The snake suddenly opened its beady eyes. Slowly, 
Very slowly, it raised its head until its eyes were on a level with Harry's. It winked. Harry stared. Then he looked quickly around to see if anyone was watching. They weren't. He looked back at the snake and winked too. The snake jerked its head full towards Uncle Vernon and Dudley, then raised its eyes to the ceiling. It gave Harry a look that said quite plainly, "I get that all the time." I know, I know. Harry murmured through the glass, though he wasn't sure the snake couldn't hear him. It must be really annoying. The snake nodded vigorously. Where do you come from, anyway? Harry asked. The snake jabbed its tail at the little sign next to the glass. Harry played with it. Bow constrictor bow. Was it nice there? Eh? The bow constrictor jabbed its tail at the sign again, and Harry read on. This beastman was fat in the zoo. Oh, I see. So you've never been to Brazil? A snake shook its head. A deafening shout behind Harry made both of them jump. Dudley, Mister Dudley, Dudley, come and look at this snake. You won't believe what it's doing. Dudley came waddling towards them as fast as he could. Anyway, you, he said, punching Harry in the ribs. Caught by surprise, Harry still hard on the con- concrete floor. What came next happened. So fast, no one saw how it happened. One second, Pierce and Dolly were leaning right up close to the glass. The next, the next, they had leaped back with howls of horror. Harry sat up and gasped. The glass front of the bow constrictor's tank had vanished. A great snake was uncoiling itself rapidly. Slithering out on the onto the floor, people threw out the reptile house, screamed, and started running for the exits. As sh- as the snake slid swiftly past them, Harry could have sworn a low hissing voice said, "Brazil, here I come. Think of a nickel." The keeper of the rip- reptile house was in shock. But the glass, he kept saying. Where did the glass go? The zoo director himself made Aunt Petunia a cup of strong sweet tea, with, with while he apologized over and over again. Pierce and Dolly c- c- could only gibber. As far as Harry had seen, the snake hadn't done anything except snap swiftly at the heels as it passed. But by the time. They were all back in Uncle Vernon's car. Dolly was telling them how it had nearly been off its leg, while Pierce was swearing it had tr- tried, tried, tried to squeeze him to death. But worst of all, worst, worst of all, for Harry at least, was Pierce coming down enough to see. Harry was talking to it, weren't you, Harry? Uncle Vernon waited until Pierce was safely out of the house before st- starting on Harry. He was so angry he co- he could hardly speak. He managed to stay calm, calm, stay no mouse. Before he collapsed into a chair, and Aunt Petunia had to run and get him a large brandy. Harry lay in his dark cupboard much later, wishing he had a watch. He didn't know what time it was, and he couldn't be sure the Dudleys were asleep yet. Until they were, he couldn't resist sneaking to the kitchen for some food. He lived with the Dudleys almost ten years, ten miserable years, as long as he could remember. Ever since he'd been a baby, and his parents he had died in that car crash, he couldn't remember being in the car when his parents had died. Sometimes, when he strained his memory during long hours in his cupboard, 
he came up with a strange vision: a blinding flash of green light and a burning pain on his forehead. This he supposed was a crash. Though he couldn't imagine where all the green light came from, he couldn't remember his parents at all. His aunt and uncle never spoke about them, and of course, he was forbidden to ask questions. There were no photographs of them in the house. When he had been younger, Harry、uh, had dreamed and dreamed、uh, and dreamed of some unknown relation coming to take him away. But it had never happened. The Dursleys were his only family. Yet sometimes he thought, or maybe hoped, that strangers in the street seemed to know him. Very strange strangers, they were too. A tiny man in a violet top hat had found him once while out shopping with Aunt Petunia and Dudley. After asking Harry furiously if he knew the man. Aunt Petunia had rushed them out of the shop without saying anything. A wild-looking old woman dressed all in green had be- waved merrily at him once on a bus. Actually, she kissed his hand in the street the other day and then walked away without a, wo- a word. The weirdest thing about all these people was the way they seemed to vanish the second Harry tried to get a closer look. At school, Harry had no one. Everybody knew that Dolly Scan hated that old Harry Potter in his baggy old clothes and broken glasses, and nobody liked to disagree with Dolly Scan.